I'm a Pueblo Indian from Acoma, Pueblo, and I'm a traditional potter. I use all native materials, my own uh, paints, my own uh, yucca brushes that, that I make myself. Everything else comes from Mother Earth. I learned the art of pottery making from my mother. She is one of our famous uh, potters, Pueblo potters. Her name is Lucy M. Lewis. My mother never actually uh, showed me how to make pottery. All she did was give me a lump of clay and she said, here, make some potteries. And then I said, well, Mom, I said, how, how do I do this? And she, her answer was, you've seen me shape my potteries, so you can do the same thing. So that's how I learned to make pottery. In order to be a, a traditional potter, you, you're going to have to have uh, patience because you cannot uh, make a traditional pot in a matter of minutes. You have to go through a long process. If you come with the right mind and spirit, you are able to get all the clay that you want. And other times, you're not going to be able to get too much. Mother clay is very unpredictable. I like this clay here. It's a greenish color. But when they fire, the potteries come out a pink, pink tinge to it. The first process is getting the clay, getting it home, drying it out, soaking the clay. Then you have to grind your um, pottery shards. And it's the grog that goes into the clay to strengthen it. And where we get our grog is from old pottery shards and new pottery shards, which we grind on the matati. Seems like uh, when you combine the old and the new pottery, that they tend to make the pottery stronger. <laughs> the old shards were made by some of my ancestors back how many years, I don't know. And uh, I feel that I have a connection with them, with the old pottery shards that I, I'm able to grind. And the new, new broken pottery shards, I mix them. So that's a binding from, from the past and the, and the present. The clay to me, it's alive. It speaks to me spiritually. And I feel that I'm able to work the clay. <laughs> so I'm rolling out a uh, clay for corrugated pots. I'm going to start rolling the clay into a circle, and that's going to be the bottom. And then as I add row by row, then I put the indention marks with a stick that I have, you know, made, made a design on. And that's my corrugated wear. That particular uh, pot that I was making, it turned out to be a bean pot. And I got a, a polishing stone and I polished the inside and that sealed all the walls. So the, uh, the oils or the juice from whatever I'm cooking doesn't penetrate into the pot. It takes me uh, quite a while to get my traditional pots out because I have to sit there, shape them. I have to get them leather hard. I scrape them, then I smooth them. And then I put them out to dry when they dry completely, then I start polishing. 
Each individual piece is polished by hand. When that's all done, then I go through the process of designing with a pencil to, give, to help me uh, get them in line with the shapes. When I finish that, then I start mixing my paint. I use three types of stones in my pigment. There's a real red red, a brown, and then a black. And I combine those three, and my paint comes out uh, brown. But during the firing, the brown turns to black, and the yellow turns to orange. This is a yucca brush. I use yucca brushes to outline my designs and to fill in the dark areas. I also use a brush, you know, yucca brush. I use the thin yucca a plant. The thinner the brush is, the thinner your line, and then the heavier if you have leave more bristles on there. I have a great reverence for all my materials that I use because I feel that connection with the, with the earth. I, I always say Mother Earth and Mother Clay, you know, and Father Fire, you know, when, when I, I um, say my prayers before I do what I'm going to do. And the final outcome of all your work is determined by the firing. Because I can make a beautiful pot and I can take it to the firing 